Hello, hello, fantastic teachers. I hope you're doing fine. And it's the end of the year, so if you're anything like me, maybe you're surrounded with food. Leftovers from Christmas, but also maybe chocolate boxes that you were given for Christmas, and also maybe already the food in preparation for New Year's Eve. And what's interesting is that this amount of food and food rich in calories too, around us can actually be the source of stress. Even if we really wanted to enjoy yourself during the winter break and we really wanted to relax. So that might be an issue and that's what we're going to talk about today. And here's why it's important to talk about it today. What I really, really want for you is to have a more simple life so that then you can actually uh, remove the overwhelm, the stress, maybe the threat that you feel when you're surrounded with those foods, and that you can walk, move forward toward your goal of eating less, right? And also so that you can fully benefit from this end of the year season and truly, really relax. So what's the issue that we can be facing right now? Well, if you're anything like me, um, I really wanted to relax and not overthink and not worry and be fine during this winter break. But right now, I find that my kitchen is full of food. And there are chocolate boxes, chocolate boxes I was given, chocolate boxes I'm going to give away. Um, Italian bread too, I was gifted some amazing panettone. Italian bread, and also some confections like Kelly Sundex. That's good. <laughs> I didn't know how good it was. And also there's turkey, there's salmon, because my daughter loves salmon. And there's also really cute Christmas tree shaped potatoes. All this food is in my kitchen. And when I think about all this food in my kitchen, my brain immediately goes to, oh, there's so much, there's too much. And when I think there's too much, then I feel immediately overwhelmed. So when I feel overwhelmed, I do three main things. The first thing is that I go over in my brain, over all the food that's in my kitchen. I think about uh, the chocolate and so on, the, the sweets, everything. That's the first thing that I do. The second thing that I do is that I compare the reality, the amount of food to my desire, my plan before the holidays to just eat when I'm hungry and not to overeat, right? And the third thing that I do is that I eat. I react to the desire for the food, telling myself, well, if I eat it, then I make the problem disappear. So I really think that the food actually is the problem. And of course, when I behave this way, I create an impact in my life. I make it a problem in the sense that because I was thinking it's too much, I actually amplify, I 10x the excess of food in my life, but also in my body, obviously. And what I really want you to remember at the end of this video is that the food, actually the amount of food, the different kinds of food in my kitchen is not what's creating the overwhelm. It's just food. It sits there. It does nothing. I've got plenty of books but in my, in my corridor too, and I don't feel overwhelmed by the books because I don't have the same story that it's too much. But because I'm telling myself there's too much food, then that's why I'm taking action. That's why I'm wanting it to disappear by overeating it. So I'm the one creating this impact, this excess of food in my life and in my body. So the very good news is that if I'm the one amplifying the excess of food in my head, but also in my body, then I'm also the solution to this problem. I can also choose to think something else than there's too much, right? It's within my power. It's within my control. But before we see what else we could think rather than it's too much, let's see why this thought, this sentence, which sounds so innocent, can actually create that problem. When I think there's too much, there are three tiny problems that we're going to observe. The first problem is that whenever we say there's too much, it's as if we're noticing, we're telling the news that, look, there's this. So it sounds very factual, 
But at the same time, when we say that, this like that, it's as if we're not taking responsibility. There's too much. There's nothing I can do. There is, okay? And we're not talking about ourselves. It's as if we're thinking that this, the food, is the problem. There is, is the problem. The second problem is that we're thinking, we're labeling actually the amount of food. We're not saying exactly the number, the exact number, for instance, we could weigh, we could measure, we could count the sweets, we could do that with all the food that there is in my kitchen. But instead, I'm choosing to think much, which is a judgment. It's me deciding to label the amount of food as much. And the third thing is that I'm also actually emphasizing the, the amount, the abundance with too much. It's the degree that I'm choosing. I could just say, oh, there's much, but I'm choosing to think there's too much. So I'm really emphasizing the, the overwhelm by choosing to think that it's overabundant, it's overwhelming, when in reality, I'm the one choosing that sentence. I'm the one choosing to interpret the situation in my kitchen as too much. So what can we do? Well, because we know that this sentence in our brain, if this sentence in my brain, is creating my problem, my overwhelm, and then leading me to overeat, creating even more excess in my life, then I can take control of what I'm thinking, what I'm choosing to think. And it, as always, there are three steps to it. The first one, as we've just done, is to notice. We're noticing, we're thinking there's too much. And that part is huge. This awareness by itself could change your life, all right? Just going into the kitchen and realizing, oh, I'm actually thinking that's too much. Interesting. How do I feel when I think it's too much? What do I do when I think it's too much? What do I create when I think it's too much? That alone, mind blowing. But the second thing is to question, actually. Question that thought. And the third thing would be to decide, to decide to do something on purpose, not automatically, but deliberately. So let's move on to the second phase, which is to question. So here are three questions that could help you actually take a step back and notice that this thought, this sentence in your brain, you actually don't have to believe, right? So the first question you could ask yourself, and I really invite you to think of that question, take a piece of paper, take a pen and write down your answer, right? You'll gain huge, huge insights into what you're thinking if you do that. So the first question could be, okay, when I think there's too much food, let's go back to the facts. Let's go back to the data. What amount of food is there really? And I'm inviting you to actually weigh the food, measure, count the sweets and so on. That's the first question. The second question is, what are you afraid of? As I said before, there are lots of books, which I could count to, in my corridor. But I'm not afraid of those books. So what is the problem with the food and the amount of food? That's the second question. What are you afraid of? And the third question is, if the worst thing happens, then what will you do? Right? If you really you're afraid of this amount of food, there must be a good reason. So let's go there and let's go fully there. If indeed something terrible happens to you because of this amount of food, then what? Create a plan so that then you will probably feel reassured because you know that you will have a plan in place. Remember the third phase, it's to decide. So you can decide actually that you like this sentence, there's too much. Maybe it doesn't create overwhelm for you. Maybe it creates something else. Okay, let's find out why, what, and then if you like it, no problem, no problem at all. But you can also decide to have a different model, a different pattern when your kitchen is full of food. And so what you can do is you could take three different actions rather than the ones that we usually take when we feel overwhelmed. So here are a few suggestions. The first suggestion could be to give the food away. Unfortunately, we know that there are a lot of, lots of people who are homeless, who don't eat a lot. So that could be the first thing you do. You could actually choose to give the food away, right? The second thing could be to actually share the food you've got with somebody you, you love, somebody you want to share the food with. And the third thing is not often talked about, but it's huge. The third thing you could do is actually take advantage of this food and actually use it to feel the desire to eat the food when you're not hungry. That could be the perfect opportunity for you to actually take this as an exercise, as a drill, 
to actually get more familiar with this intense desire or simply this craving that you have for the food and learn how to manage it without eating if that's what you want. So if you remember how the model works, you know that when we take action, it's because we're feeling an emotion. So what emotions could you be feeling if you were to behave the way I've suggested? And of course, there are plenty of other ways, plenty of other emotions for you to try on. I'm just here providing, you know, just like providing cookies for you, providing suggestions for you, and you do whatever you want with them. It's no big deal. So here are three emotions that I thought of that could help you. If you want to actually give the food away, the emotion that you could need to do that would be caring. If you want to actually share the food, that was the second suggestion that I made, what you could feel, what you could want to feel is actually connected to the person you love and to the person you want to share the food with. All right, so caring, connected. And the third emotion, the third third optional emotion that you could want to try on could be willing, right? Willing to process the emotion of desire for the food and see what it comes. And if you remember how the model works, you know that if we take action, it's because we're feeling an emotion. And if we're feeling an emotion, it's because we're thinking something, a particular sentence. So here are my suggestions. The first one for feeling caring could be Somebody else needs it more than I do. That could feel caring for you. I know it does for me, right? That could be the first thought you choose if you want to feel caring. The second option that you could have could be this chocolate experience can be even better with somebody I love. And that could make you feel connected, right? And the third option is let's learn a new helpful skill if you want to feel willing and actually feel the emotion of desire for the food without reacting to it, without responding to it, without eating. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful to you. And if so, please share it with a teacher, share it with a friend who wants to stop stress eating. Lastly, I'm inviting you to send me an email if you want to stop stress eating in a doable way, one tiny impactful step at a time. Please send me a message and we'll figure it out for you, right? And it remains for me to wish you a very happy new year. Take care.